Hi everyone, Rainbow Turtle here. Since my last video, I've received a lot of questions about what exactly Memsource is, how to use it, and how to set it up. So today my video is just all about Memsource. I'll first go into what it is, some of the features it has, and why I like using it. And then I'll go into how to set it up for people who are interested. So first, what exactly is Memsource? It is a computer-assisted translation tool. Um, cat tool for short basically it doesn't translate for you but it has some features that makes translating easier and if you go to the website you can see that there's several um, paid versions and there's also a free version down here which is the personal version so the personal free version is basically the same as the paid one except that you can only do two translation files at the same time so that isn't you know bad for people who like us who translate one chapter at a time although i have the paid version just because i have a lot of projects in two different languages so going back to mem source you can see here this is the basic setup for the desktop version there's also a cloud version that i'll show you later I prefer using the desktop version, so yeah, so that's what I'll be showing you first. So this is a sample chapter from I Wasn't Born Lucky. And you can see here, there's several, there's the Chinese text on the left, a spot for you writing on the right, and then the sidebar with different information. Going down here, I'll explain some of the features of the sidebar. So first is the machine translation. So when you set up the project, you either pick Google or Microsoft Translate and then it'll have the machine translation version on the side. Um, down the bottom, the yellow bar is TB, which is, stands for term base. And this is basically your glossary. So you can see on the side here how um, two characters are highlighted and they stand for Shali, which is the term that I added on my glossary and when you type you type in one letter and the glossary term will pop up and you just have to press enter and it'll basically fill, auto fill it for you yeah so that is one of the features I like the glossary which helps with remembering names um, terms if you're translating gaming novel in skill terms and it also has autofill which is based off the glossary and the machine translation so if it's not on the sidebar then it won't show up with the autofill but if you just like type you'll see that you can autofill it you just type in one or two letters and it'll pop up if you want to select it and then just press enter and it'll automatically enter it for you. So that can help um, speed up your typing once you get used to it. More. I'm just trying to find an example of translation memory. This is basically the editor, the mem source remembering previous translations that you've done. And if it's 70 or 80%, I think I'm not certain about the number. If it's, let's say, 80% similar, it will show up on the sidebar and the number is how similar it is. So 100 is 100% 100 similar to a previous translation you've done. 99% similar. Yeah, so, and then you can just basically double click it and, it'll, and you don't have to type it up again. So that's basically what translation memory is. Yeah, so that's a short description of some of the features there are. Um, might go through it in more detail when I go through the setup. So the setup, first you need to sign up for an account, which is pretty easy. You know, just email, password, whatever. And then it will redirect you to the main page, which should look... Uh, let me just log in again. Yes, yeah, so you log in. 
and it will look a lot like this. It has your various projects. So the first thing you do before setting up a project is um, changing some of the settings because, um, yeah, so you go to next to, at the top, next to your profile, pick a name. There's a tool image and you just click on it and that's your overall settings. And the first thing you should do is go down to project settings and file import settings. Click onto it and then click on the tab that says Microsoft Word and click on Min minimize number of tags. This is um to help with weird formatting in the editor. If you don't do that then it, the file looks really weird. So yeah, you click on that and then press save. The next thing you do is go back to project settings and go down to segmentation so with main source as you can see earlier it splits the chinese rules into different segments and if you don't do this setting then the punctuation will end up going on a separate line so the full stops and quotation marks will be on their own line and you don't really want that because that's annoying so yeah so you go segmentation you press new Sorry, excuse me. And um, there'll be a file that I'll link down below that has these settings. Sorry, my internet's just being slow at the moment. Press new. You can click the language, which if you're doing Chinese, this is mainly for Chinese. So you go select Chinese a name to it and then you choose a file and then the file that I just that you download from the link I gave you before it's just a language setting file so there's no malware or anything yeah so you select the press open tick primary and then press create and then once that's done that should be it for the overall settings and you go to the side, pick project again. And now it's time to make your project. So you click new. Um, give your project a name. I'll just give it test. And the language that you're going to be translating from. So I'll just say Chinese. And then the target language would be English. Um, you select The English that you are familiar with and this will also affect the dictionary because um, Mensos also has a dictionary feature so this will affect which English like British or US dictionary is used. Um, you don't need to fill in the due date. You don't need any of that. The last thing you need is the machine translation engine it will automatically have um, Microsoft and you can change it to Google if you want but I think with Google you need an API key while Microsoft is free so yeah so that's basically it 4% our project just need the source language and the target language and you click create and it will show up this is your project page and the job is where you um, upload the chapter files to translate. Before that, you have to um, create a term base, which is your glossary. And you just press create new. Type in the name Chinese. Um, Chinese English and create. I prefer to have an overall glossary for all my projects, not for different novels, just because Terms can repeat across novels, so it's just easier instead of adding it again. And you also create the translation memories, which is Chinese again. And your setup is basically done. Now you go to upload a job. 
if you're using the free version, you can only upload two jobs at a time. And that's across all projects, not one project is two jobs. No, it's two, pro two jobs again across all your projects. And then um, you can click for one document. If you want to upload more than one, you can just hold down Cult and click and you can select several. And then press open and create. Um, I'm going to go back to a project that I've already created just because I already have Bossy and 10 base for them. Okay, yeah, this cheese file, select, call, select. Click OK and they'll import the files. And now if you prefer using the cloud version, then you just click on the document and a new tab will pop up. And you can see it's similar to editor. Except um yeah, it's similar to editor except it's a bit slower for me. It depends on your internet, I suppose. Which one you prefer. So um going back to download a the desktop version file you select the job you go to download and you go to the bilingual mxliff file and you go yeah and then you download it um you can just press on it here to open it or you can go file open and then select it now let me go through some of the that's basically it for the setup and i'll go through some of the shortcut keys how to add glossary yeah so the a shortcut key to add glossary is cult t and i'll write these out at the bottom as well if you have trouble hearing me and you just copy the word you want to add, that's the name, and then type it, and we, and then press add, and it'll show up at the side. If you want to edit it or delete it, you can click on it on the sidebar and go edit target or edit source. Edit source will be editing the Chinese, edit target will be the English, and then you click on that, and then a window will pop up. And you can change it here and once you've let's just say this is chapter 39 once you finish you just press call enter and the tick mark shows that is complete you can go back and edit it and press call enter again um if the way they segment the rules isn't to your liking or you want to adjust the sentence order you can press cult j and that will join the two segments together if you want to separate it then i've got is cult e I'm not sure why it isn't splitting. But yeah, it's basically called E. Um, if you go to the bottom, sometimes, because this depends on your internet connection, green will show that everything's connected. If it's gray or red, just go log in again. 
and press save. You have to enter your details when you first download the editor and then it's always saved. And then just press save and you can log in again until it clicks on until they're all green. The bottom here shows how many segments it is and the total characters of the raw. Um, if you're a uh, if you're a translator and you not machine translator and you don't want the machine translation, for example, when you press enter, the next segment will automatically have the machine translation pop up. If you don't want that, just go to tools and preferences, and then. You, you untick insert machine translation and then that should no longer pop up. It'll pop up with the doors and then you just have to call A and delete it. Another thing you can do with preferences is change the font size for different bars. So you can adjust it to your liking. And then once you've finished the file, go back to the project page and you can see the percentage here, how complete it is. If it's completed, it will show up as 100%. And then to download the completed file, you just go download, completed file, and then download. And that's basically it for how to use Mensource. So for four questions about you know why I use it, it's just the glossary is the most useful feature. You know it really makes life a lot easier especially if you're a machine translator and you can't read the Chinese characters. So being able to recognize names easily is one of the main features of why I use it. Yeah, it's not just, it is most helpful machine sh for machine translations, but you know, I also know translators who like it just for the terms, the glossary, because they have a lot of terms. And you know, if you have an idi idiom, you can just like type it, save it as a glossary term, and then later on, you don't have to type it all out again. Yeah, so that's basically it for my video on Mensource. If you have any questions, just write it in the comments or email me and I'll try to respond. Thank you for watching.